Welcome to Fat Boy and Critic, where we watch new movies and give you reviews about the good and the bad. I'm Joe Mortiz, and I'll be your fanboy. And I'm Sam McClure. I'll be your critic. This week on Fanboy and Critic, we went to go see not the most recent movie, but the movie that everyone is talking about, La La Land. Directed by David Chazelle, who also worked on Whiplash, starring Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Let's take a look. Alright, critic. Tell me about this movie and tell me how you're gonna bring it down. Cause it seemed like everybody loved this movie. Tell me something good about it. Tell me something bad. All right. Well, let's start off with the bad. The story doesn't exist. This movie is 90% a montage set to music. The relationship literally has three scenes to it. Three scenes: the scene where he creepily stalks her to his work, to her work. Uh, the scene where later on he's kind of nice to her. He's like, "Yeah, you can do your dreams." And then later on, when he's a dick and breaks up with her. Yeah, and then they continue on about their little summer relationship, summer fling. This movie took place in the winter, Jay. Yeah, and then they went all four seasons, though. Yeah. Okay. okay, something good that I will admit that I did love John Legend, and John Legend's music in this movie was amazing. I can't get it out of my head. That's the one good thing that I wow. will say about it. Go ahead. Let's hear what you thought. One good thing, one bad thing. One good thing was everything. I love the entire movie from start to end. You misunderstand the number one. One good thing. The one good thing I really liked was the relationship part of it. I mean, the whole love story in it. That was the best part. I loved how it ended. That's true love right there. It was almost as bad as Twilight. Twilight was good. That's why they call me the fanboy. <clears throat> one bad thing one bad thing was John Legend's music no I love this music his music is good um, the one bad thing I didn't like I can't think of anything the movie was just so good that's my argument alright so you liked the relationship let me tell you why you're wrong <laughs> why am I wrong because Ryan Duckling is a jerk to her the entire movie He's nice to her for, like, one scene. He's a jerk to her. When they first meet, he flips her off in traffic. And then he shoulders her out of the way at a bar. And then he's a jerk to her at a party. And then, for some reason, he decides to stalk her all the way out to her work. And she's all like, Oh, Ryan Duckling, you're so hot. I'm gonna like you now. And then they date. But and he's a jerk to her while they date. You know what? The stalking the first time was creepy enough, and then he stalks her all the way to her hometown, which is like hundreds and hundreds of miles away. She has a phone, Ryan Duckling. She has a phone. Call her. No, but you gotta make it all dramatic, especially when you did the horn. I thought that was really cool. Because they had a callback to him honking the horn at her earlier. Yeah. Which is a dick move. <laughs> Go to the door and knock. See, but look what that got him. He didn't end up with the girl being a jerk. And that shows you what happens in real life. And what happened? She actually ended up being happy. That she was married at the end. And she got the job that she wanted. And hey, he got his career move. But he didn't get the girl. And I feel like that's why I loved it so much. It was so real. That's, that's what kind of happens in no, real life. No, no. It was two selfish people that put their ambitions ahead of another person. Another human being. They put their own ambitions ahead. 
They showed us what happens if he goes with her to France. He could have gone with her to France. There's jazz in France. He just didn't want to because he's selfish. It can happen and it's like a real world. Like, not everything has a happy ending. I mean, I've had certain, a lot of not happy endings, especially with women. But I think... <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't think that way. <laughs> but, I mean... I mean, it really checks you into realization of, like, not everything's a happy ending. Well, no, it's not a happy ending, but they promise you a happy ending from all the trailers and the teasers. And that's and from what the makes very it beginning. an awesome movie. Because it takes a turn to hell at the very end. From the start, you're like, this is awesome. I love how they met. I love how they built their connection. And then all of a sudden, you're like, damn, they didn't end up together. Man, I don't want to go to the movies to see a toxic, failed relationship. I see that enough of that in my own real life. Okay? I need to see happiness. I need some hope. <laughs> There is hope in the alternate universe and ending. Let's talk about how John Legend is supposed to be the bad guy for wanting to bring a modern sensibility to jazz. He's not the bad guy. His, well, his music was way better. Yeah. Well, the way they, they kind of build you up to where you're like, I want to hold on to the roots of the jazz and everything, and people don't li listen to enough jazz. And they do make John Legend seem like he is a bad guy. But when they get into the whole motion of him joining his group and making new music and how he is reviving and keeping jazz alive through the new ways he wasn't so much of a bad guy now you could kind of respect him and you see what he's trying to do with it but they try and make the point that new jazz is killing old jazz it doesn't work that way something new doesn't destroy the old it just doesn't work that way yeah, it keeps you it can't going. making the bad guy out to be the guy that just wants to keep people interested in it by any way possible and his music was awesome. Yeah, that was one of the better songs for sure. I want to see a sequel that it's just John Legend's side of this story. What you think about uh, the whole, like, being an actress in Hollywood and everything? I thought it was really sad and desperate and accurate. About how she's going uh, all these places. She has a boyfriend and she goes to these parties and flirting with a bunch of dudes because she thinks they can help her out with her career. Like... That's sad and pathetic, but it's accurate to what Hollywood really is. This person is rising up. So even with like to... the audition part, when she was like playing different roles and people were just coming in, interrupting, like I feel like that really happens and that sucks. It's not suffering, it's not starving children, it's not people dying of a disease, it's people that choose a difficult path for a career and it's difficult and really they're not struggling at all. They're just putting themselves in a position that's difficult. And it's not the same as struggle at all. You know, I think these are dumb white people with dumb white people <laughs> problems. It starts off in traffic. Is that's is that's why I was very, like, this is awesome. This is very LA to start off in traffic, and, and it's in the middle of winter and it's warm and, and sunny. And I think the opening scene is like uh, another winter day in LA, warm and sunny in traffic. Like that's that's definitely LA. That's what it's about. That's L.A. It, it does capture L.A. in the desperate sadness of what it is. Struggling musicians. But actors. it does make fun of all the Priuses here, so I appreciated that. Yeah, that was and hilarious. Ryan Duckling is being a, a car valet, and Emma Stein comes up, and she's like, oh, it's the Prius. He looks down at the key box. They're all Prius keys. <laughs> he says, that doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> I don't blame you. I know you like the ending <laughs> because you hate life. <laughs> but you love all movies and I love life and shit on all movies <laughs> this movie angers me in ways I can't you got two describe. endings technically they showed you what could have happened but what really, what really happened so yeah, you could, you so could just, just stay and enjoy your fancy I mean your fantasy ending and no, I'll enjoy the real ending. it just proves that I'm right that their selfishness and ambition got in the way of an actual like loving relationship that they could have had these are the sacrifices that people have to do though they are selfish characters and i refuse to feel sorry for them and that's why they gave you two all right i'm pretty sure this is going to be easy for you since everybody already loves this movie but go ahead and give one good argument to the audience at home as why they should go see it you should go see it because it's an awesome movie if you have any kind of respect for the arts of acting and the roots of music and just LA and Hollywood, you should go watch it. I definitely think it shows you what LA is all about in Hollywood. 
I think you shouldn't go see this because they market it as a huge love story where everything's happy and musical, which is what a musical is. I'm not saying that everything should be that way. This movie told you that it was going to be a happy, great love story, and it was depressing and bitter and just horrible people trying to be in a relationship where they just don't care about the other person. Don't go see it if you want to see something happy and musical. <laughs> Fanboy, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to give it already, but from love to anger, where are you on the spectrum? I'm going with love. I love the movie. Like I said, from beginning to end, everything was perfect. From the music to the acting, how they described everything, I, I loved it. All right, here's the deal. This is a mediocre movie at best, but everybody's all aboard the Ryan Duckling train and the Emma Stein train. They love them so much. They're beautiful people, I get it. But this movie is not anywhere near as good as anybody thinks it is. It is the revenant of this year. So I am going with anger because so many people love it so much and they say it's just the best and they're it's just vastly overrated. Most, if it was a different movie that people didn't like that much or were just like, oh, that's a good movie, I like it, I would probably be at the Y. But I'm just so angry that everybody thinks this is the greatest thing that's happened all year. It isn't. Not even close. Thanks for watching, Fanboy and Critic. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. It helps us increase the production value around here. Feel free to leave a comment. Tell us what you thought about the movie. If you hated it, you no longer have to hide because I hated it too. Leave a comment saying how much you hate La La Land. Next week, we go see John Wick, Chapter 2. My boy Keanu Reeves. Keanu!